Welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time we talked about the endocrine system. Today we are going to be going over Unit 2, Topic 3 of AP Psychology. An overview of the nervous system and the neuron. The nervous system is our body's primary information system for our thoughts, voluntary actions, and also our involuntary actions. Think of the nervous system as a high-speed bullet train. The nervous system is constantly sending signals at an extremely fast speed throughout your entire body. This is how your body communicates and makes decisions. All of your actions, feelings, and thoughts require your nervous system. So you could say the nervous system is a pretty big deal. The nervous system can be broken down into two main parts. We have our central nervous system and our peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord. This is the control center that gives orders to the rest of the body, while the peripheral nervous system is all of the different nerves that branch off from the brain and the spine. This allows the nervous system to communicate with the rest of your body. So for example, when you decide to smash the like button on a YouTube video, or when you consider subscribing to a YouTube channel, it's your central nervous system, your brain, that is sending a message through the peripheral nervous system, through the nerves in your hand, and telling your hand muscles to move and press that button. Now at the start of this video I said that the nervous system is how your body communicates. And if you're good at communicating with people, that means you're not only good at speaking, but also listening. Communication is a two-way street. The nervous system is similar. While the central nervous system sends messages through the peripheral nervous system to tell the body what to do, the peripheral system can also send messages back. When looking at the peripheral nervous system, we can see that we can break it down into the sensory division and also motor division. The sensory division, also known as the afferent division, focuses on conducting impulses from sensory stimuli to the central nervous system. This means that the PNS is taking information from your body and sending that information to your brain. Remember at the start of the video when I said the nervous system is like a high-speed bullet train? Well, the afferent neurons of the PNS are the tracks the messages are being sent through that go straight straight to the brain and spinal cord. This allows your body to constantly be informed about what's going on inside your body, but also what's going on around your body. All this information comes from your sensory receptors, your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. So when you accidentally set your hand on a hot oven burner, your sensory receptors in your hands are saying, ouch, and that message is traveling up through the afferent pathways of your PNS to your brain, and it's telling you that you're in pain. Next is the motor division, also known as the efferent division of the peripheral nervous system. Signals here come from the brain and spinal cord and go out to the muscles and glands of your body through the efferent neurons. These signals create motor or movement responses. Going back to our example of your hand on the burner, as soon as the message gets to your brain, your hand is burning, your brain sends a message down the efferent pathway to your hand to move your hand off the burner. These messages are being sent so quickly you hardly have time to realize what's happening. Remember, the sensory neurons, also known as the afferent neurons, send signals to the brain and spinal cord, while the motor neurons and efferent neurons send messages from the brain and spinal cord to the rest of the body. The somatic nervous system, or also known as the skeletal nervous system, includes your skeletal muscles, your movement, and your five senses. These movements happen consciously and voluntarily. Whenever you go biking, play video games, you are using your somatic nervous system. You are consciously pushing the pedals down with your legs or pressing the buttons on your controller, which is your brain sending signals to those muscles to move. The autonomic nervous system controls your involuntary activities. This system makes sure you keep breathing, keeps your heart rate beating, your stomach digesting, and all those other wonderful bodily functions that happen in the background that you need to survive. All of this happens without you having to consciously think about it. The autonomic nervous system allows us to reach homeostasis. It provides stability for our internal environment. The autonomic nervous system has two divisions which work together, especially in an emergency. The first is the sympathetic division, which is what gets your body mobilized and ready for action. This is what makes your heart beat faster, your eyes dilate, and your breathing increase. It also slows down your digestion to allow for more energy to go where it's needed. It's known as your fight or flight response. The second is the parasympathetic division, which is what relaxes your body. This slows your heart rate, increases your digestion, and helps you focus on saving and storing energy. This is commonly referred to as the rest and digest. Okay, so we've been spending a lot of time now talking about the central nervous system and also the peripheral nervous system, and now we are going to start talking about the cells that make make up these systems, the neurons and their helper cells, glial cells. Glial cells are the most abundant cells in the nervous system, and they support neurons through protection. They also provide them with nutrients. Glial cells do not process information, meaning they do not send any messages or signals for your body. Neurons, on the other hand, are the basic functional unit of the nervous system. Neurons communicate with each other by using electrical impulses and chemical signals to send information throughout our nervous system. Let's take a minute and go over the different parts of the nerve cell. The 
name of the cell body is called the soma. This houses the cell's nucleus. The nucleus contains the genetic material, including information for the cell to develop and other structures that allow the neuron to function. Extending outward from the soma are dendrites, which receive chemical information from adjacent neurons through receptor sites. The dendrites send this information towards the cell body. The message then goes down the axon fiber. This is the longest part of the neuron, and it carries information away from the soma and out through its terminal branches. Think of the axon as a long cable that allows the cell to send information away from itself to other cells. When I say information is being sent down the axon, it's sent in the form of an electrical impulse. This is a process called an action potential. We'll go more in depth into this process in our next topic review video. So make sure you've hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. All right, so we're almost done, but I wanna highlight a couple more important parts of the neuron. First, we need to go back to glial cells and talk about how they can protect the neuron. When it comes to protecting the neuron, we have glial cells, known as Schwann cells, which wrap around the axon and produce the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath covers the axon and increases how fast the action potential travels down the axon, and it also protects the axon from being damaged. Now, there are gaps in the myelin sheath, which are called the nodes of Ranvier. This is where the axon is exposed, which helps promote the continuing action potential. As the information and action potential progress down the axon, it reaches the axon terminal. It then has reached a meeting point between the two neurons. This is called the synapse. This is where the action potential releases neurotransmitters into the synaptic gap or cleft, which is how information is further relayed to the receiving neuron. This is how neurons talk to each other. The synaptic gap is the space between the neurons, specifically between the end of the axon terminal and the next neuron's dendrite or cell body. Just like action potentials, we get into the specifics of neurotransmitters and the synapse in future videos. For now, remember that that the neurotransmitters are located at the end of the axon, which is called the axon terminal, and are released into the synapse. So you can see that your nervous system is a pretty big deal. This allows us to function and live the lives we live. This video is just a quick overview of the nervous system. In our next video, we'll go into the neurotransmitters and the different types of neurons, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of that awesome content. Also, if you're struggling with any of these different types of concepts, make sure to check out some of the resources in the description of this video. And of course, don't forget to answer the practice questions that have been on the screen and check your answers in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin and until next time, I'll see you online.